what I have here is the basic unit, the vise with its two clamps. So if you attach the vise to the bench and lock it up, you'll find that you have what appears to be a standard vise with two sets of jaws, a top set and a bottom set. You also have a 20 centimetre jaw span and a quick release. Now, with an ordinary vise, you've obviously only got one set of jaws, and the major problem is this. When you tighten it up, you'll always end up with that seesaw movement. With the Ausweiss, you can use the bottom jaws, and by doing that, you're using your bench to give you the support that you need to keep it nice and firm. So if you want to do some joinery work, like a butt joint, or well here I'm going to do a T-joint. The first piece can be locked into the top jaws while you bring the second piece in from the side. Get the angle set just the way you want it, and when you have it right, lock it off. Now you'll find that that piece is solid and you can then fix the joint. The first piece once again held by the top jaws while you bring that second piece in from the side. What you can do is very easily take the vise off the bench and simply turn it upside down. Now rotate the clamps and put the vise back onto the bench and you now have a flush mounted vise. You have the same jaw span and the quick release, so it's very easy to position your material. It doesn't matter if it's timber or metal, it works just the same. The handle drops out of the way to give you a nice clear area for working with any of your tools. There are times when you want to go wider and it's very easy with the Ausweiss. Simply move the end clamp to the middle and you now have a vise which is able to push. And of course it can push all the way along your bench. So by using the end stop, you can start working on much larger pieces of material. If you want to work on some furniture, tables, chairs, then there's going to be, going to be a chance of you coming across pieces like this. Very difficult to hold properly in an ordinary vise. With this one, you simply use the turning centres. One goes into the vise, the other into the end stop. So you can now position your material between the two. Bring the end stop along, lock it into place, and you'll find that's easy enough to turn. So you can paint or sand it. But if you wanted to work with, say, a chisel or a spoke shape, Simply nip that up with the vise to hold it nice and steady while you work. I've got one here on a piece of stud timber and it's set up as a sash clamp. So the timber, the end stop and the vise enables you to do all your clamping and gluing jobs. Now if you take the unit off the timber and turn it around, by using the suitable length of timber, depending on the job that you want to do, you have your own portable jacking device. Over the top jaws there, you could be holding up a piece of timber, a piece of ceiling panel while it's being fixed into position. Take the clamps off altogether and replace them with the auxiliary mounting plate. And you can now put your clamps on the plate. Then the vise can go back onto the bench. Remembering of course that you can position it where you want. So you now have a horizontal vise almost identical to a standard bench vise. If you wish to you can drop those clamps back to the first pin and then reattach to your bench. This will allow you to go from zero degrees up to nearly 90 degrees. Great for holding big overhanging pieces like window frames. Some people use them to hold their bike frames while they're doing a little bit of maintenance. Put those clamps onto the rear pin and that will allow you to go from roughly 45 degrees all the way back to about 170 degrees to get pretty much any position you, you like. The clamps can be used separately. Some people use these as little mini G clamps. So you've got two mini G clamps there and another one 
in the end stop itself. And I've got two of those clamps holding this piece of metal tube. So have, if you have some pipe that needs cutting or welding, it's a very good way of holding that material nice and steady. But there are also what we call soft jaw covers. And you can use them if you're working on softer timbers that you don't want to bruise or even delicate machinery parts that you can't afford to damage. And they simply slip over the jaws like that. There's also hard jaw covers. Use those if you're working with uh, files and grinders. And finally, we call these pipe jaw covers. You can use them to hold all sorts of unusual shapes that you simply cannot hold in an, uh, in an ordinary vice. I made earlier reference to bike frames, and this is how you would protect the frame from any damage. And you can position your material any way you like in any of those cutouts. Some of you may have the optional extra drill holder. You can position it just like this on your bench. Lock it in place, and then you'll find that your drill holder will slide easily down the shaft. Lock it in place initially while you position your drill, and then lock the drill in place. This is designed to take your standard 43 millimeter collar drill. That's your standard domestic size. If you have an older style drill, which may have a smaller collar, it does come with a shim. And uh, all drill holders after the middle of 2013 came with this shim. So you can put that in to reduce the diameter. Once you're happy with your drill set up, you can release the lock nut on the side. And then, using your hand, you can come down and do your drilling. You can also set it up like this. As you can see, I've taken the moving jaw off the vise and replaced it with the drill holder. Now you just need to put on the disc that you want, depending whether you're sanding, grinding, polishing, and the fixed jaw becomes your tool rest. So thank you very much for your attention. My name's Ray. I hope you get a lot of use out of your Ausvice, as uh, I'm sure you will, and you'll discover other ways to use it, as many tens of thousands have over the years. Thank you once again.